childhood is a big one, but does not approach is a source of sorrow. That means that if I go, I'll become the source of sorrow. Hello, my name is Ashley Ogbe. to be here again. Yes, thank you. It just reminded me that I should say good morning in my good day. You know it's in the Bible, don't you? The word of God says you are made in the image of that is in my good day. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be in your presence and to be with the people of God. Father, there is nothing like being with people of God. For there, there is healing. In, the pre in your presence, there is deliverance. In, you minister to us differently. And Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Open our hearts and our minds to hear you this morning, Lord. Not to hear Patrick, but to hear you. Father, may our lives manifest that hearing as we live here in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, after Pastor Chuka spoke and Brother James spoke, all I had to say had been said. Amen. Amen. They made it clear. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your... You don't look unto man. You don't look at Patrick. Patrick is a mess. I am just beginning to find my way in the Lord. You won't believe it. But you will see. Because I've been struggling with myself. Should I give the testimony of my life now or after? I think I'll give it at the end. Amen. Amen. So you see how messy I am. But you see that God can use messy people. Praise God. Because without a mess, there will be no message. Amen. Hallelujah. We are still camping on Genesis chapter 22. Is it? I've been visiting your lighthouse groups and the Lord has been blessing me. You won't believe it. You know, in church, we don't know anybody. Leah, we don't know you. Come to the two hours of staying in... Um, look at Sister Tola. I never knew her before. Is that not Tola? Tola, is it? She's wonderful. Bosse, you've not heard this people minister. It's at the lighthouse. Stella, all of you. It's at the lighthouse. I've met you. Met your person. I'm telling you, you are missing. Because in the, you know what happens in this kind of gathering? We wear masks. Everybody is looking pretty. Is that true? They come and see me in my mess. You say, is this Uncle Patrick? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, let's go straight to the word of God. We are still camping on Genesis chapter 22? Okay. I've decided that today I'm going to touch on two aspects of that uh, passage, but let's just go through it at least because the word of God ministers to us differently. Yes, let's go through so you get. Yeah, after these events, God tested and proved Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. So we've established you will be tested, I will be tested. Praise God because the testing of our faith proves that our faith is genuine. Yes, and God tests us to strengthen us. Hallelujah. Amen. So, God chooses the time of the testing, the type of test, the intensity of the test, and how to test you. But the test will be potent enough for you to want to back away. It will be something you place high value on. And it will be tough enough for you to want to truly back away, I'm telling you. Praise God. Hallelujah. But he who gave you the test will also enable you to go through it. If you what? Trust him. Is that okay? Yes. Let's establish that. So when the test will come, you don't know. How it will come, you don't know. But the Lord will never give you a test that is beyond your capacity and ability. Because he's faithful. 
And my test will be different from your test. Praise God. Hallelujah. For some people, it may be a test of health, finance, or relationship. But it will come. So we keep on holding on to him. Like a Pastor Chuka said and uh, Brother James. Keep on looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our. And man is never your model. Our model is Christ. Is that okay? Yes. But we in the church, people that are more mature, you can see. In fact, if you have a bad model, you can learn as much from a bad model as you can from a good model. Do you know that? Because a bad model shows you what not to do. Which way not to go. Yes? And a good one shows you, yes. Yeah, that's, that's real. And when they are doing wrong, you say, no, I can't follow that. That is wrong path. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Alright. Verse 2. God said, take now your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Was Isaac his only son? But Isaac is the son of the covenant. Okay. Verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning, prompt, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and then began the trip to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. And Abraham said to his servants, Settle down and stay here with the donkey. And I and the young man will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Then Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on the shoulders of Isaac, his son. And he took the fire, the fire pot in his own hand and a knife. And the two of them went on together. Two people going together by different objectives and motives. Praise the Lord. Me and you, they work out for road. But a different objective, we, they, we get to. Okay? And Isaac said to Abraham, oh, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Isaac said, See, here are the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt sacrifice? You know, Brother James says something here. When we are reading your life, what will you be like? Go on. Abraham said, My son, God himself will provide a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two went on together. Abraham said, when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there. Then he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took hold of the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, he answered, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or anything, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear and revere God, since you have not held back from me or begrudged giving me your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and glanced around, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering and an ascending sacrifice instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. And it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. Praise God. Hallelujah. Get back to where the angel of the Lord said something. Is that 11 or 10? 11. No, 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 no. Verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Yes, 12. 12. Do not lay your hand on the lad or, or do anything to him. For now I know that you revere and fear that you fear and revere God, since you have not held back from me. The angel of the Lord is talking, or begrudged giving me your son, your only son. I want to center on the angel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You saw there the angel of the Lord 
I want to focus on that angel of the Lord today. We've camped, we've heard everything about God calling Abraham to take his son. Yes? The child of covenant. Praise God. This is the child of covenant that Abraham waited 25 years to have. It was a child of promise. That was why that dispensation is not a dispensation of promise. And he was to be through whom the offsprings of Abraham will come and be blessed. And now, God says, offer that son to me as a bond offering. Can human reason ever understand that? Good. And Abraham had nobody to ask. He had no presidents. There was no example for him. He came, Abraham, by the way, was an idolater. He was an idol worshiper before the Lord called him. Do you know that? Joshua chapter 24, verse 2. Abraham was an idol worshiper. Like I was an idolater before the Lord called me. And like you, whether you like it or not, before he called you, you were doing your own thing. So you were an idolater. Amen? So God calls Abraham, Joshua chapter 24, verse 2. Is it there? Okay. Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt in olden times beyond the Euphrates River, including Terah, the father of Abraham, and Nahor, and they served other... It's good. If you draw the timeline of Abraham's life, you will see that for 75 years, Abraham was doing his own thing. And God called him at the age of 75. He said, leave your father, leave your household, leave everything. Is that the same thing today? I want to see a bit of parallel. When Jesus said, follow me, it's exactly the same thing. You saw the sons of Zebedee. When Jesus said, follow me, they left their father and their fishing profession and followed him. Is that okay? He's there, he's there. Okay, but let's center on Abraham. So Abraham, God calls him at the age of 75. Praise God. Between the ages of 75 and 175 when he died, let's draw quickly a, a timeline. Now, after he's called him, Abraham leaves. He doesn't get to the land of Canaan immediately. He gets to where? Haran. First of all, he lives with his father and nephew Lot. They get to Haran. They stay in Haran until Terah, his father, dies. Then after his father dies, they proceed to the land of Canaan. Is there in your Bible? Now, when they reach the land of Canaan, they begin to live as it were. And you know the story. Lot and, his, um, Lot and Abraham, they begin to grow in livestock. Yes? And after they've grown in livestock, their servants began to quarrel about pasture lands. And Abraham tells Lot, it's not good for us to quarrel. There is enough. Okay, you go, either you go to the right, I go to the left, or you go to the left, I go to the right. And Abraham, in spite of, in spite of the fact that he's older than Lot, he gives him the opportunity to choose. That gives you something about who this man is. He gives his nephew the opportunity to choose. And the nephew says, ah, that is the fertile land. He takes it. Many of us settle for the temporary. He takes it. And that was towards the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it had to take Abraham again to come and deliver him. Is that true? Yes. To rescue him. Is there in your Bible? Okay. Now, after that, God gets again on Abraham and makes a covenant with him. Timeline. Is that okay? Genesis chapter 15. He makes a covenant with Abraham. Yes? Because Abraham says, how do I know that I will possess all, this, all these promises you've made to me? Land, um, seed, and all that. How will I know? And God said, bring me some of these animals. For what? For covenant. So when God makes a covenant with you, God can go no further. It's simple. Get that in your Bible. When you are in covenant with somebody, you rest, you are rest assured. You've made your covenant. All you have to do is to keep to your own terms of covenant. Amen. Are you getting it? And if you're a Christian today, you're in covenant with God. Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Because anytime you have a covenant, there must be a sacrifice. And you walk through the sacrifice into the covenant. Praise God. 
by covenant, all that God has is ours. That is why we have inheritance in Christ. And that all that we have in our lives are God's. Is that okay? So when God says, go to Pakistan, you hear me? You get up and go. <laughs> Praise God. You will say, did you, nobody will tell you, did you hear well? If you say, go to America, people will begin to be happy. Dollars. But you might have more wala in America than in Pakistan. Believe me. If God asks you to go, he will make the place how he wants you to do it. Praise the Lord. Okay. So timeline. We are going on timeline. Then, God, Abraham, Abraham, and, Abraham and Sarah, I'm not looking at when their names were changed. Again, they reasoned. Coming from the tradition they came from, the Nuzi custom, then they decide that, look, Maybe it is this girl that, because they've been to Egypt, isn't it? During a famine. They came from Egypt and brought the Hagar. So they begin to look at the young girl, that maybe it is through this young girl that we shall have a son. Can you imagine? God, God keeps quiet. Then Abraham, in our life today, you say that Abraham and Sarah abused Hagar sexually and threw her out. Is it not true? A man of faith. I see my hopelessness and mess in Abraham, I'll tell you. Okay. Now, what happens? And God keeps quiet and tells him clearly, by Ishmael, is not this promise, this promise is not be fulfilled in Ishmael. And that fruit of that fleshy behavior is still with us today. Do you, do you think we learn? No way. Man, doesn't it? Let's move on. God makes covenant. Abraham and Sarah gets Ishmael from their fleshly and customs of the world. Okay? God comes back to Abraham. I say, you are going to have a son. Both Abraham and Sarah laughs. When they say who laughed, people say, Sarah, I've read it again. I saw Abraham laughed. With a man, 100 years, have a child with a woman. With God, all things are. We sang in a song now. Do we believe them? We sing one thing, do another. When it comes to doing, believe me. Okay? At 99 years, God says, circumcise yourself. Praise the Lord. At 99, Abraham was circumcised. And at 100th year, Sarah, the, Sarah got pregnant and gave birth to a child called laughter. Is it true? Okay, good. That's timeline we are going. And eventually, it comes to time when Isaac, I think, was 15 years. And he said, now offer me. No, before that time, he was sent away. Ishmael and there, because that is not part of God's a plan. Then he said, give me this child that I've given you a sacrifice. <laughs> boy, oh boy. What will you do if it is you? I leave that to you. Then you saw. That changes the whole life of both Isaac and Abraham. That everything changes. And we know that God does not, God didn't come the first day tell Abraham, give me your child. No. As you walk with the Lord, yeah, Pastor Chua was saying that the margin of your sin, sinfulness or that begin to, I don't know about that. We are so sinful. I am seeing now how sinful we are. The more you walk with God, the more sinful you know you are. God lives in a realm of sinlessness. We don't know what that is. Our thoughts, our actions, our deeds are all colored by sin. I'm telling you. It's like I've never been born again like I am today. I'm telling you. It's good to be in the garden of God's people because when we are worshiping all that, you don't know how God is working on you. I'm telling you, God works on all of us differently. If only you stay focused. Okay? All right. Then the, that one finishes and Sarah dies. Yes. Abraham takes another wife, Keturah. Has more six sons. Sends them away. He dies at 175. So Abraham, we can say, walked with God for 100 years. Is that okay? There was stumbling. There was rising and falling. There was relationship dysfunctional and all that. But eventually, God held his hand and he continued. May the Lord hold our hands. As we put our hands in his. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want to focus on things about. You know the Bible talks about Abraham's bosom. Yes? 
Luke chapter 22. Is that correct? Abraham's bosom became a place of paradise. Remember? That when Dives and Lazarus died, people who lived in the world, yes? All of you know that, don't you? So Lazarus was, the other was a poor, wretched man during his life, but he was a righteous one. Then dives who enjoyed his life on earth. When they died, they lived their life of separation on earth. And when they died, they had another separation, different destinations, isn't it? And Lazarus was taken to Abraham's bosom. But dives, the rich man, was taken to his own place of torment. And when you read it clearly, you see that in, in hell, which represents hell, there was memory. Yes? There was still life. He didn't, people say annihilation when you go to hell. He said, no. There was memory. Because he said, when he said, Father Abraham, tell Lazarus to dip his hand in what? And just touch. He said, no, remember. So we know it's a place of torment because he was being tormented. He was not annihilated that he was all blown away. People say that hell is annihilation. No. He was still alive. And he remembered because he even said, now, okay, Father Abraham, tell the, some, to go down eh, to my people. And he was still, he wanted these people not to come to where he was. Say, go tell them that, you know, they shouldn't come here. He said, if they cannot listen to the prophets in, on the earth. Yes? If you send somebody from the dead, they will not listen either. The word of God, the word of God is stronger than the hell or death. Are you getting it? When you read it, you draw your own conclusions. You must start drawing so that you know where you stand. Because the Bible says that two things will last forever. The soul of man and the word of God. Is that okay? So we invest on these two things. Nobody goes into annihilation. Okay, that is Abraham. So Abraham's bosom represented paradise. Although you know that paradise is now in third heavens, isn't it? Because when Jesus died, he took paradise to, to heaven. Is that okay? Praise God. Now, I want to center on the angel of the Lord. Who is angel of the Lord? Get me that 22-11. 22-11. By the angel of the Lord. Some people said, ah, small thing. Abraham would have killed that boy. You lie. Amen? Amen? The angel of the Lord would tell his hand. He wanted to. But God, there are things you may want to do sometimes. You don't know why you didn't do them. Because God held you back. Yes? Remember when Abraham went to uh, Abimelech's territory? Pastor Chuka preached it very well here. He spoke to my life, so that's why I remember. You know, something that speaks to your life, you remember it. Yes? And Pastor, Ch uh, Pastor T talked about common grace, and that has blown a lot of things. Because I believe so many people who say professing Christians are living in common grace. They're not living in God's territory, I'm telling you. Because when you begin to think, shall I do this for Who are you? It's incredible that God, who has your life in his hands, eh? Praise God, though. I don't want to go that one first. Now, listen. When God speaks, he has the enablement to enable you to obey what he has said. Are you getting it? That is why you cannot look at man, look at Patrick. Look at you, is Patrick. Mess. The angel of the Lord called out from heaven. Yes? Twelve? Twelve, please. And he said, do not lay your hands. Yes? Thirteen? Yes, 14. Yes, 15. Yes, go on with that. Aha. I have sworn by myself, says the Lord. Now, the angel of the Lord seemed to be interchanging with God. Have you noticed? Go on. Go on. In blessing, I will bless you. The angel of the Lord is talking. In blessing, I will bless you. So this angel of the Lord, from this, is God. Is that not true? Okay. Let us see another passage in the scripture. Look at Genesis chapter 16. Because the meaning of scripture is scripture. Never forget that. 
The meaning of scripture is scripture. Whatever you say one place can be, should be found in another place. Amen? Genesis 16. In the encounter of Hagar and um, the angel of the Lord. No, no, go to, I think, verse 9. Yeah. The angel of the Lord said to her, Go back to your mistress and humbly submit to her control. Go on. Also, the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly. The angel of the Lord is talking like if he is God. So that they shall not be numbered for multitude. That was the blessings to Ishmael. Is that okay? And the angel of the Lord continued, See now you are with child and shall bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael. God hears because the Lord has heard and paid attention to your affliction. And Ishmael will be as a wild ass among men. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he will live to the east and to the borders of all his kingdom. Is, is Ishmael today a wild donkey of a man? Yes. Is he living in hostility among his own and others? Can you see the word of God? How it comes? I, are you see, I didn't write it. The day I saw this thing, I was blown away. Why didn't I see it all this time? But what I'm concerned about is angel of the Lord. Who is the angel of the Lord? Good. The angel of the Lord, we say, is Jesus. Praise God. We call it Theophany or Christophany. That is the appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. It's recorded about 25 times or so. I will show you two more places, then I proceed to other things. If you look at Judges or the encounter, go to Exodus first. Exodus chapter 3. The encounter with Moses on the burning bush. Moses in the burning bush. And God said to Moses, no, 14, no, no. Start from 3. I want you to establish this in your heart proper. Amen. Because everything we say points to Jesus. Listen, it doesn't point to man. To Jesus. Who, like all of you, you've heard it this morning, is our benchmark. Amen. Amen. And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight. While the bush is not born. You know what was happening there. Moses had, after Moses had read, lived in the palace of Pharaoh. You remember? All that it made him was a murderer. That's all he made him. A murderer. After 40 years of best education and best life in the, in the palace, he was just a murderer. So when you read Mark chapter 7, 21 to 23, when Jesus said, this is what you find in the house of him, can you bring it up? And we we'll go back to Exodus. Mark chapter 7, 21 to 23. Yes. For from within, that is, out of the hearts of men, come base and wicked thoughts, sexual immorality. Are you getting that? You saw a man, a judge, who was made, who has been fiercely contested about Kavanaugh. Everybody has known him now, isn't it? They say he had, he had a kind of, he wanted to commit sexual immorality when he was 17, 36 years ago. Did, did, did you hear that, didn't you? The Bible says in Numbers 32, 23, is it? That sin shall find you. I'm not saying he did it too, but praise God. Uh, from sexual stealing, murder, adultery. Go on. Go on. It's not finished, I know. 22, my dear. No, 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 no. 22 now. Look at the thing that is in the heart of every man. No. Listen, let me tell you. Last week, Somebody I know very well told me that her husband wants to kill her after 39 years of marriage. And I began to cry. I came. I told Brother Akin, I said, do you know somebody? He said, what did she expect? And I remember this verse. If you are married to an unbeliever and he wants to kill you, what did you expect? Immediately, I remember this verse. Look at it. Mother, you want to kill somebody that you've spent life? Yes. Does it happen? Yes. Coveting. A great desire to have more. He said, what did, he, what did she expect? Uh -uh. Immediately I remember this verse. Because everything we do, there must be a reference in the Bible for what we do. 
The Bible, the word of God interprets us. We don't interpret the word of God. Are you getting this? There are always a reference to what we do in the word. Unrestrained. Okay, now we've seen it. That is what is in the heart of man. <laughs> Praise God. So when you say grace, some people say, I can't do that. Hold on, you can do worse. But for the grace of God. The Bible says that the spirit that God gives us restrains us from doing certain things. Otherwise, we'll do what we want. Galatians 6. Is that 15, 17, 16, 17? Minus the spirit of God in us. We'll be worse than the worst unbeliever. Let's get these things clear. Praise God. So the angel of the Lord. You saw again the encounter with uh, the, Mr. and Mrs. Manoah. You remember? Judges chapter 13. Yes? Judges 13. Galatians 5, I said. <laughs> and the angel of the Lord said to Manoah, let the mother be aware of all that. Yes, go on. Go on. Only the type of, yes, keep on. Yes, go on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Judges, no wonder. I didn't see what I'm looking for. Judges, judges. Maybe I didn't pronounce it well. Judges. And the, uh, and the judge said to Mona, yes. Go on, yes. And the angel of the Lord, hold on. And Mona said to the angel of the Lord, what is your name? Praise God. So that when your words come true, we may do you honor. Yes, 18. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why do you ask my name? Seeing it is. You remember, immediately you remember Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. Is that clear? Immediately his name shall be wonderful, counselor, and the government will be upon his. Okay. Now go on. <clears throat> so Mona took the kid of Syria and offered it. Yes. Go on. For when the flame went up toward the heavens from the altar, the angel of the Lord ascended in the altar flame, and Mona and his wife looked on, and they fell on their faces to the ground. Yes? The angel of the Lord did not appear again to Manoah or to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was the angel of the Lord. 22, and Manoah said to his wife, we shall surely what? Die. Because we have seen... Okay? So, you know the angel of the Lord is God. But is it Christ? I don't want, because my time is running too fast. I don't want to go other places. Now, remember in the Bible, there are three birds that represent the Trinity. You know that, don't you? If you read Exodus chapter 19, the word of God says clearly, you have seen how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you out of Egypt. Yes? That's ego represents God the Father. Yes? And you know the bird that represents the Holy Spirit? The dove. Now, which bird represents... Yes? Yes? I can't hear you. Which bird represents God the Son? No. The hen. You know the hen? Have you ever seen hen? Chicken, fowl. You know, you know hen? Have you ever, when you were kids, I had plenty of, I was uh, bringing up this, um, training these birds. When I'm coming back from school, they are following me home because I was keeping them. I was giving, I give them food every time. So when they, once I'm coming home, they follow me, believe me. <laughs> it was so bad that when one didn't hatch, I helped it hatch the egg and you know the chicken died. Because the chicken is supposed to struggle in the egg and come out on its own. So I thought that by breaking it for the mother, I was doing good. That, that fowl didn't last long. It was when I grew up that I began to remember. I allow them to struggle this struggle. It's good for them to get strength, isn't it? When your child is growing, you don't prevent him from having headache or having... No! They must go out! Hallelujah! 
because their wings and everything, they struggle, but they, when they come out, they are fortified. So, the hen, you remember what the word of God says when Jesus said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I would have gathered you under my wings as a hen, gather it. Jesus is the one that walked the earth, isn't it? Trample on the dust. You remember in John chapter 13, when the apostles, when they came, when they were having the last dinner or last supper, remember? You must remember it because in verse 3, I think he says that he loved them to the max. You must. I tell us. He loved them. To, here is, look, Jesus, he said his time had come to depart this world. And what happened? He's not thinking about going to heaven. He's thinking about his disciples. He took a garment. Remember? Yes? He took off his own garment, took a towel and took a loin something and began to wash their stinking, smelly feet. Praise God. And then he said, concluded, he said, now that I, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you wash one another's feet. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I've always asked, will you be able to wash the stinking, crinkly feet of an old woman where you are not seen? Where nobody notices? Will we? Or we shall come to church and wash the feet of who we know, who we love, those who will wash us? Praise God. And at the end of that, verse 34, 35, he said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. When you what? Love one another. I tell us. Study it. I'm saying I'm beginning to study the Bible. I have never enjoyed the Bible the way I'm enjoying it now. And I am so broken. You know what is? I'm messed up that I never knew the Lord the way I'm knowing him now. There's a study I just did two days. I didn't come out of my house. I couldn't. I was like paralyzed. Amen. Amen. The time is going. But we have established that angel of the Lord is Jesus. We call it Theophany or Christophany. Appearances of Jesus in the Old Testament. Because you wonder, what was Jesus doing? Praise God. I don't even have time now to give you the differences between Jesus coming in the flesh and the Theophany. Praise God. But don't worry, we shall have time. When I come to your lighthouse groups, which I'm enjoying so much, I'm the one being taught. I want to give you my, I see, if this time is correct, I have only barely three minutes to finish. But I will give you my messy life so that you know. Because he said it's Uncle Patrick. It's like, you need to know the mess that is Uncle Patrick. Amen. At least, Pastor Chuka has given me the platform. He cannot take the phone from me now because I'm speaking the truth. <laughs> Listen. When we are talking about, it's like, I don't know. It's like this thing was given so that I must give you my testimony. And I'm weeping here. Listen. I know that every, every man will be tested. How you fare is your own business and God's. But I now know that God will never give you a test that you cannot. Because when you say that all things are possible, uh -huh, when it comes to nitty gritty, where the rubber meets the road, then we shall know your confession. And let me tell you, you know what you confess? You'll be tested on that. You know, many of you have never seen my wife. Amen? Only the loved Chuk and his wife, they know my wife very well. Um, I think that is my own area of test. And I failed it completely. You know what is fail? I scored less than zero by my own estimation. But I tell you, God is merciful. When God asked me to go to Bible college, you know, crisis always separates, brings out something. My crisis started, and I began to know people better. So, naturally, everybody wants to come in England and make money, isn't it? If you ask everybody, first thing is money. So, when God told me to go to Bible college, there was real agitation against it. We tested it. I was only one year when I came here, but I went. And, you know, the test continued. But inside the test, I had joy. Anyway, the sum and total of it is that my wife said, look, I'm chucking you out of the house because you are a mess. That's the first time I came here. Pastor Chuka gave me shelter. 
And I was paying the mortgage, £1,500 every month for three years. Listen, I couldn't have paid that if God did not enable me. Believe me. I can see, you know, when it's on hindsight, you see everything. But we we're talking. In fact, she may, I was so scared of her. But she, call, she calls. Ah, I wonder how a woman can chuck a man from the house. I pay you this money and you are calling me. And I'm scared. And if I come too close, you tell me I'll call the police. Ah, okay. I went to America. I can, how can I live here and not stay with my own wife and family? I went to America. I was deported with the same plane I went. I've told you this, but I'm fixing the thing for you now. The same plane that I was deported back because I told them the truth. The man, after interviewing me, said, you know something? You are very honest. You are hardworking. God will bless you anywhere. I said, yes, amen. God will bless you anywhere. I came back with the same plane, virgin plane. The man that took me to the, state, to the airport, he said, if you had not taken me and seen my loads go, he wouldn't have believed. You think the mess will stop? I came back. I said, maybe God wants us to reconcile for we are. That was when I came here. I was staying with Pastor Chuka. Then, listen, the courts, they were writing me this bad letter. Pay. Ah, God. Terrible. May not happen to anybody. Yeah. My prayer was, may not even happen to my enemy. Yeah. And the child support, they were threatening me. I drink back. I said, if you ever threaten me again, I will deal with you. Nonsense. Who are you to threaten me? <laughs> huh? A man who is down fears no fall. When you are down, you can't fall beyond. Can you? Nonsense. I was a madman. I didn't know where I was. But the word of God, you know this, um, what do you call it? What do you call this thing you put in your ear? Yes, there's something you call it. Anyway, the earphone with the Bible loaded, I w it was constantly, Im that's the only thing I was doing. Hearing the word. I remember John 14, 1. He said, trust in God, trust also in me. In your, no matter the crisis, I, I just put the phone in my ears 24 7. That's the only thing I was hearing the word of God, nothing else. After five years, I went to another theological course. And then she was coming there too. Anytime she comes, she sit with me. And sometimes she tell me to take her home. She, we meet, talk. I keep on saying, ah, What kind of thing is this? Okay. We finished the course. She said I should come home. It was me that made this course possible. I should come home and organize everything. But at least I, I, I can't know what is happening, what this means. Anyway, we finished that one. Then I reproposed to her. She didn't even talk anything. Hey, I reproposed. <laughs> she didn't even say anything. Nothing. She didn't give me any word. So after I, then I went to a church where I was worshiping. And I was teaching discipleship class, which is what I believe God said we should do. I was teaching that discipleship class, and eventually, the pressure was so much. Then I, I, I came here. I told Pastor Chuk about this girl I want to uh, get in relationship with. Pastor Chuk, I said, will she cope? I didn't know what that meant. I left Pastor Chuk. I said, well, because a cousin of mine came from Nigeria. I did my house, everything. I said, so I need a woman. I didn't know. I didn't need. You know, there's something, you know. Adam didn't know she needed a woman. He needed a woman until God told him, Adam, you are lonely. I went to another man, a pastor who was elders in the same church. So I went to him. I showed him that the, with the wife. Because I, I still meet with him, uh, James Colby. Listen, when you have problem, the person you go for advice is very important. If you go to softies, you are dead. Go to people that are hard. You think they're hard? People that have hearts with God. I went to Derek Prince. He said, listen, the devil is after you. Love your wife. Forgive her. Bim. And I went to this man. He said, God is purifying you with his fire. Huh? Nobody told me what I wanted to hear. I reproposed. She didn't even say anything. Then I got in touch, touch with this girl. When I took her to that pastor, he said, will she cope? Them and Pastor Chuck didn't meet. But they said the same thing. But me, I went on my saru or what you call it. Two years down the line, everything was just wonky. And I began to conclude that, no, 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 this, this is not God. God is not in this. Even Brother Akin said, he's not touching it. <laughs> he didn't touch it. So and I made up my mind, look, you need courage. I told you here that your courage comes from your conviction. I'm telling you. 
If you are not convinced about the word of God, you will not have courage to move in it. Listen, you have your own experience. The reason we give our testimony is to see that I'm just a mess. But God, in that mess, is bringing his message. So, and I had someone to call stand up. Called her, called her people, say, listen, this is not it all. I remembered Ezra, when they came back from exile, when they married all these wife with children. I said, thank God in our own, there is no child, nothing. So, we can't continue like this, so this is not God. Do you know, many people rang me, say, ah, pastor, we thought you have seen this now. What? They were just happy that this, but you know something, throughout all this, I kept my, the love for my wife, it's just increasing. That is the main thing. Can you imagine loving Peter and you're living with Paul? Is that, is that okay? No. My, my, love, my love keeps on growing for my wife. And then she calls and stays one hour, two hours on the phone. And I ask her, why are you calling me? Am I your husband? Am I your lover? Who am I to you? You know that kind of a thing. So praise God though, I was delivered. I'm telling you, it's a big deliverance for me. Because I was choked almost. I was going to the surgery, almost suffering from hypertension and diabetes. I didn't know where I came from. But when I got rid of this, I woke up one day and boy, I'm feeling so great. The church is calling me and say, I'll come when I can, when I want. Amen? So, you need to know who this mess of Uncle Pat, when they say Uncle Patrick, he's a mess that God is just building up. I needed to clear this so that, now, but thank God, even the pastors I'm working with in Nigeria, he said, we are wondering whether you are really born again. Now, look at this verse. So, when well, Pastor Chuka priest, Abimelech, until God spoke to him, he couldn't have. I, I remembered. I was coming back from the airport and God, shh, listen, when the Holy Spirit touches something in your life, he doesn't leave you. He lays a finger. Finger. You can't. I get choked when I hear the word and I don't obey it. I don't know how it happens to you, but I'm telling you how it comes to me. And when I hear the word of God, when it gets to me, it gets into my pericardium, my heart. You know my heart? In that enclosure, it rocks with warmth. If you want to kidnap me, this is what you can use. The word of God. Now the Bible says that Abraham was Abraham was a faithful man. The Bible calls Abraham remember, God of Abraham. You remember? If you read Acts, I think Acts 7 verse 32 or so. Now, God of Abraham. Because Abraham walked intimately with God. When we come to Christ, what happens? We become the people of God. God literally comes inhabiting us. Amen? And he inhabits us by his spirit. Please, could you put on, on the show what the Holy Spirit does in every believer? I nearly forgot. Just one minute. What the Holy Spirit does in every believer, whether you like it or not. Praise God. Listen. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm under authority, please, but I'm so sorry. What the Holy Spirit produces in a person, whether they like it or not. Amen? Listen. When people say they are Christians, what it means is that they are indwelt by God. Is that okay? Now, you don't feel the Holy Spirit coming to your life. We don't know. You don't experience Him walking in your life. But the fruit of the Spirit is manifestly visible. Is that okay? And these are some of the things. Yes? When a person says he is a disciple or she is a disciple of Jesus, because no Christian can be a Christian without being a disciple, then these are the signs. Go on. Come on, let's see. Let's see them. Good. You must have a hatred for sin. That's where it starts. Loving God, loving what God hates and what God loves. You have joy in trials, sufferings and persecutions. Yes? You have desire to repent and seek salvation. You will have holy affections. The Holy Spirit illuminates the word of God. He said, the entrance of the word brings what? Light. Okay? You believe the gospel and believe in the truth of God's word. Some people are cynical. When they hear the word of God, nothing, it doesn't move them. 
Yes? You make worship a way of life. A desire to become what's, it, what's happening now? You know you are very fast. You love the people of God in the true sense of the, listen, there is in a sense where the people of God also belong to you. You love them. You get increasing capacity to love and the ability to love people. I'm telling you, no man can do that in you. No person can do it. You fellowship. You want to fellowship. Have, because when we fellowship, is worshiping God in spirit and in desire for, desire for increasing Christ, Christ-likeness. The whole purpose of our Christian life is to make us as like Christ. Matures the believer. Remember the components of the fruit of the spirit? Love, peace, joy. Patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, meekness, and self-control. Nine components of the fruit of the Spirit that must be inside the life of a believer. And the more you obey God, the more he gives you grace to do his work, and the more he matures this. Praise God. They that love me will keep my word. Matures, yes. By, the list is by no means exhaustive. But that is, you don't, it's just well, like you see a mango. You see a mango tree. You don't know how the workings in the mango. But when you see the mango fruit, ah, that is what? Mango. Amen. You don't know how you, whether you like it or not, if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit must produce these things in you. Holy affections. Holy, I mean, you like, you want the things of God more than the things of, you're no longer a man of, or woman of traditions. Eh? Too much tradition. No. You love people. I don't have to know you to love you. I hug you. I love the man. Eh? Some of the women too, but you, you are careful because of political correctness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. May the Lord bless you all. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your gift of life. Father, our lives are in your hands. Father, my prayer, my, my earnest prayer today is that you take every one of us. You are a mighty God who takes each one of us differently as we are and works out your purpose in our lives. Father, may that purpose continue intensely. May our lives continue to conform to the Christ-like of Jesus. And may we go here really joyous that we have met you. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. Amen. You have been listening to a message recorded from the Redeemed Christian Church of God International Christian Center, Chadwa Eath. If you need copies of this message, please call the church office on 0208-859-00789 or 0208-59-77111 or email us at media at icc-rccg.org. Please find further details about this ministry at www.icc-rccg.org God bless.